Welcome to Teaching the Truth with Pastor Eric C. Bogan. Clearly define what I am to do. Let every word penetrate the heart. Let what is said lead them running to your arms. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Um, we're going to go to the John 14 and 1 through 6. Yes, the grass wither, the flower fadeth. But the word of God shall stand forever. Let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength, my redeemer. John 14 and 1 says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know. And the way, ye know. Thomas had something to say about it. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? But Jesus said unto him, and this is where the text comes from, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You see, there are four major discourses that Jesus gave that are recorded in the Bible. Uh, there's the Sermon on the Mount that we have in Matthew 5 through 7. Then there's the Kingdom Parable Discourse in Matthew 13th chapter. Then there's the Olivet Discourse that we should kind of be familiar with at the pastor's series in Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark 13. But today we are looking at the Upper Room Discourse. Somebody said the Upper Room Discourse. This is the last discourse as well as the longest and the most intimate. It covers John 14, through 16, possibly most of the 17th chapter as well. This discourse was given in the upper room with Jesus, by Jesus, for his disciples. This is a private gathering, not public. All these other discourses were public gatherings, but this was a private gathering. Jesus, because Jesus' public ministry now is about over. Why? Because the people have rejected him. Pastor C has been talking to us about rejection and about the spirit of rejection. John 1 and 11, the Bible says he came unto his own and his own received him not now here in the upper room, after being followed by his disciples for a little more than three years, things are getting real. Unbeknown to his disciples, Jesus is less than 48 hours away from being crucified. Jesus, knowing that this time was short, his time was short, excuse me, began to pour into his disciples those necessary truths like any good leader would do. Our pastor did something similar for us uh, here recently with the series on the end times. And I hope you were listening because I was listening. And uh, it was in the upper room where Jesus took the towel 
and girded himself. Jesus poured water in a basin, got down on his knees and washed his disciples' feet, uncharacteristic of any other leader. It was, if you want to be great, he says, uh, you need to be servant of all. Everybody in the room that's wanting to be great, you got to learn to serve everyone without respect of persons. Amen? That's what we're trying to be. We're trying to be like Jesus. Amen? It was uh, in this upper room that Peter, Peter was told, no, excuse me, let's deal with Judas. Judas was told, it was revealed to, to everyone that somebody would betray Jesus. It was in the upper room that Peter, the spokesman of the group, was told he would deny Jesus. As if that wasn't enough, Jesus says he's going away alone to all these men who had left all to follow him. Surely these disciples were facing trouble and uncertainty and Jesus knew it and he cared. He forgetting, meaning Jesus, his own burdens. Forgetting that he would have uh, be slapped in the face and spit upon and thorn, a crown of thorns on his head. Forgetting that he would soon suffer and die. He turns in order to comfort. I said to comfort and encourage his disciples. You know, I remember with my mom when she was lying in the hospital dying of cancer. And it was a time when I, I would go out every day and I would sit, sit with her. This particular day, I, I went out to see her and I had to preach that day. Instead of worrying about her pains and her sufferings and, and diagnosis and, and life being uh, short, she took out time and prayed for me, laid hands on me and said, go on, get on out of here and go preach the word of God. What I'm saying is that when you really have the love of Jesus in you, you have a love that is a selfless love. Uh huh. You have a love that's a sacrificing love. And see, pastors talking about a year of preparation and this year is almost over. And he's talking about we got to be ready. And in order to be ready, we got to become more and more like Jesus. And what more better way to be like Jesus than to have the love of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says there's no greater love than this. Let's go to John 15, 12 and 13. The love that is selfless, the love that puts others first. This is my commandment, verse 12, that ye, said me, love one another as I have loved you. Greater love have no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. Despite all the disturbing series of events taking place, Jesus uses the upper room discourse as a means of encouragement and instruction going forward. Not just for this faithful few, but for all that would follow Jesus. How many want to follow Jesus? I said, how many want to follow Jesus? Well, let's hear the instructions of our Lord. He says, this is why he said, let not your heart be troubled. He knew all the things that these disciples were facing, what was on their mind, what was in their heart. And you having trouble in times, especially in a day like today. And God knows all about it. He knows what you're going through. He knows what you're facing. I'm having trouble in times with my son, my children. And it bothers you. It hurts. But you can't get caught up with that. The first word he said in this verse was let. It means, in other words, you don't have to let. Let not your heart be troubled. It means you have an option. God has given you an option. And what is that option? See, the antidote to trouble is belief. He says, when facing uncertainties and trouble, let not your heart be troubled. But he says, ye believe in God. 
I say ye believe in God. Don't stop there, but also believe in Jesus. Have they said anything to you? Have you listened to the words and instructions? Have you, are you standing on the promises? These things will encourage you. Come on, somebody. John 14, 2 and 3. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. Not only do we have to believe, but we need to remember. Somebody say remember. And what you remember? Remember that this is not our home. I don't care what you're going through, what you're facing from day to day. This is not your home. You're just a pilgrim. You're just a pilgrim passing through. God's got a better place that he's prepared for you. And he's coming back to welcome you into the Father's house. How many glad about it? Amen. Amen. And what we're doing, we're trying, Pastor. We're trying, the pastor's trying to help us, trying to help us to get home. How many want to get home? Amen. Amen. Not only that, we're going to cut through the chase. I see the time. We want to believe. We want to remember. And now we want to know that Jesus is the way. I said Jesus is the way. The way. That's the way my daddy would say it. The way. Not the way, but the way. Meaning that there's not another way. It's the way. You know the way, boy. <laughs> In an inclusive world that teaches that all religions lead to heaven, Jesus says that he alone is the only way to God. John 14 Five and six says, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus begins by saying, I am. I said he begins by saying, I am. This is one of the seven I am's. In this chapter, this book of John. Amen. I am. It means it was uh, God's covenant name. Excuse me. Uh, it, it's the self-existing one. It means that Jesus is our present help. You know the scripture said that he'll be a present help in the time of trouble. That's talking about Jesus. This talks about Jesus is in the present tense. Genesis 17 and 1, we're going to rush through these scriptures. Abraham looks and sees at 99 and 99 years old, 17 and 1, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Exodus 15 and 26 says, and if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Uh -huh. Jeremiah 3 and 12 talks about him being merciful. Exodus 3 and 14 says, I am that I am. I am the way means I am the path or the road. John 10 and 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Ephesians 2 and 18. For through him we both have access. That's through Jesus. By one spirit unto the Father. How many glad that the I am said that he's the way? 
you know that he not only said he, he's the way, he's powerful enough to, and wise enough to make a way out of no way. How about that? When I was much younger, uh, uh, much younger, it was much, much younger. It might have been much, much, much younger. <laughs> Traveling to the Holy Convocation, we would drive to Memphis, Eddie. There would be a caravan of us with no maps or directions except for one or two, Sister Bunny Woodrow, who would be leading the way. It was in your best interest to stay with the leader. How you were accustomed to driving didn't matter at that point. If you had a light foot or a lead foot, it didn't matter. It wasn't important. All that was important was to get there. I said to get there. I want you to realize that following can be humbling. I said it can be humbling. You can't just do what you want to do when you want to do it. Following conditionings you to follow and adjust to the ways of the leader. And see, with Jesus being our way, we got to learn how to adjust and adapt to the ways of the leader. See, it may cause us to change. It may cause us to change our behavior. I said it may cause us to change our mind. And definitely it's going to cause us to change our direction. That's why I call this lesson, I'm rerouting. I want you to know I'm rerouting. I see some things in my life that's not so much like my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I, I find myself heading in the wrong direction sometimes. And for best results, uh, I think we need to follow Y'all hear what I'm saying? So uh, instead of going in the wrong way and bumping my head, I believe I'm going to reroute. How about you? Anybody else want to reroute? I want you to know Jesus is the only way. Uh -huh. You have to stay close and be attentive because the leader is the way. Matthew 7, 13 and 14 says, enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in there. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth into life, and few there be that find it. See, the word straight means that it's a narrow way. It means that it's a difficult way. As we read in Matthew uh, the 13th and 14th, Jesus says, Jesus' way is straight and narrow. And we must learn to follow, even though it may be a little uncomfortable at times. You see, being a Christian is a life that sometimes is a struggle. Jude 3 says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, I, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. And that word contend, earnestly contend, comes from our word agonize. We got to agonize. It's going to cost some straining on our part. We're not just going to be fluting and flying to make it in to the kingdom. But we got to fight to get into the kingdom. Hallelujah. We got to fight the good fight of faith. Anybody praying with me? Being a Christian requires. No, Ephesians 6 and 12, please. For our wrestling is not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the world rulers of this darkness, against the spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. 
Being Christian, nine, Luke 9 and 23. Am I going too fast for you? I'm trying to get through. Luke 9 and 23. Being a Christian requires effort and sacrifice. I said effort and sacrifice. The Bible says, and he said unto them, all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross daily and follow me. I said, take it up daily. On a Monday, take it up. On a Tuesday, take it up. On a Wednesday, take it up. Oh. In Isaiah 35 and 8, take you back when I was a little boy. Superintendent Haas would say, in a highway shall be there and a way and it shall be called the way of holiness the unclean shall not pass over it but it shall be for those the wayfaring mean though fools shall not err therein psalms 86 and 11 oh lord i need you teach me thy way oh lord and if you teach me your way, Lord, you got to be honest with the Lord. If you teach me your way, Lord, I will walk in thy truth. I'll unite my heart to fear thy name. John 6 and 68 says, Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Jeremiah 6 and 16. Thus saith the Lord, just stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. How many need rest for your souls? How many need rest for your souls? But the bad thing about that scripture, the, 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 the B side of that says, but they said, we will not walk therein. We're not going. And I'm mighty afraid that some of us today won't be going. Refusing to obey God's ways. Refusing to hear his voice. But if you don't follow Jesus, you won't make it. He's the only one that came down. And he's the only one that went back up. And no one else knows the way. If you don't have Jesus, you won't find your way to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proverbs 14 and 12 says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And I'm praying for all our, our children and all the generations that's coming after us because they got to receive Jesus. If they don't receive Jesus, you got to listen to Romans 1, 28 through 32 says, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, hating of God, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Oh my, oh my, I don't want to be lost. I said, I don't want to be lost. 
1 Peter 2, 21 says, For even hereunto, this is why we were called, because Christ also suffered. He did what no other man could do. He did what no other person could do for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live, live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but not anymore, but are now returned, rerouting, returned unto the shepherd, and bishop of our souls. Say praise God for the word of God. Father in heaven, we do honor you and we do praise you, Lord, for your word, Lord. And God, we pray, Lord, that it prick the hearts of men. God, that it go forth and accomplish that for which you sent it. Father, before it's too late, help us to reroute. And to come running back to you. Running back to you, Lord. We need you, Lord. And we realize we need you, Lord. So, God, forgive us our sins, Lord. Wash us and make us clean, Lord. Ah! We want to be right. We want to be saved. We want to be whole. In Jesus' name, amen. Give me what to say. Let me hear you. Thank you for listening. If this teaching has been a blessing to you and you'd like to partner with our ministry to share the message of Jesus Christ, please visit our website at www.hmclive.org and click the donate button. If you're in our area, we invite you to join us at 4317 Lippincott Boulevard, Burton, Michigan, 48519, Harris Memorial Church of God in Christ, Teaching the truth and showing the love. Use me.